The Bug Strike Back update is now live and of course lots of players have been worried about base defences. You may have seen a bunch of tubers and streamers showcasing some stuff off in the public test branch over the last few weeks. But don't panic and don't worry too much. I don't think you're going to have to worry as much as you think about setting up huge defences and walls everywhere, putting turrets everywhere. Yes, they can be a problem, but I'm going to go through exactly everything you need to know about factional reactivity, base raiding from the bugs, and pretty much give you some tips on maybe some locations and why you shouldn't panic too much. So let's go. So in case you've missed any of them videos, break down. Once you kill enough bugs, and if you're hanging around in certain areas, like going into ant hills or just mooching around in their zone, they will suddenly start taking notes of you, and eventually they will send a squad to come and attack your base. Now they can attack any of your kind of outposts or buildings you've got on the map, but you should get a decent indicator telling you that they're interested in you. So there's three stages. Basically you get told that the bugs notice you, they know of your presence. This should pop up with this little symbol smaller on the left hand side of the screen. When that symbol turns to orange, you'll know that they're getting closer to a raid. They're annoyed by you should be the message that pops up, but you don't have to panic too much, but you might want to think about going home soon. When you see the red symbol and it says faction once you've gone, that's when you need to get back to, I would say, your main base or your main point of contact. And obviously pay attention to what creature it is. So if you've got a bunch of different bases and outposts, one in the grasslands, one in the pond, and maybe one in the haze, the base will get attacked by the faction closest to that base. So if you've pissed off the ants, as it says, then they're going to go and maybe attack your base in the grasslands. This should help hopefully clear up a bit of confusion, people worry they're going to be halfway across the map and not understand where to go exactly, because some of the markers aren't always that clear. I love base defense, I think it's the future, I can't wait for them to add more defense points to it, but for sure it definitely still needs a bit more work, but that's what early access is for. So if I've pissed off the mosquitoes, I've built my base in the pond area, I can expect an attack from the mosquitoes at that base in the pond area. That said, if I've managed to maybe build a base on top of the wooden fence posts, there is a chance the mosquitoes might go and attack that instead, as that might still be considered part of the pond. They'll basically go to the nearest base to them. So what can you do to stop this happening? Well, as I said, not much. If you're going around killing them, that's probably the biggest way to trigger it. But if you want to stop them from destroying your base, you are going to need some sort of defenses. But I don't think you're going to need as much as you would think. There were some horror stories from the PTB about players getting attacked every two days or whatever and having their whole base wiped out by bees. And you still may encounter some hard times, but they have changed exactly how many days it is. Six to nine days is the gap between raids. That should give you plenty of time to go ahead and repair anything someone did to your base or make sure that all of your bases are a pretty good position. So what about the base locations themselves? Well, as the thumbnail says, don't build here. You could spend absolutely days building something up like this structure, thinking that it's got lots of support because of all the walls, easily to kind of fence off, but the bugs can still attack and they can still get through these little gaps. I went ahead and used the waft emitter just to show you guys what would happen. I filled this completely up with mosquito blood sacks and more, and I did get a huge wave of them, at least like 15 or 16 mosquitoes. And they were damaging the partitions and the walls through the stone. They've always had quite large area effect damage, a lot of the bugs anyway, so you're not immune by building up something like this. However, it's still a good location because it does mean you won't get as many attacks from other creatures like ants or infected, they're not going to be able to go across the water. And so if you're pissing off ants, they're not necessarily going to be able to do much to you because you're simply safe. So for that reason, it could be good to build on the pond, yes. And this could be a good location for a small base. But I would really not go too mad on building up huge defences because the bugs still will be able to get through. Instead, you've got to think a little bit more about having your best resources a bit more safer. Your crafting benches are what they're really trying to aim for and go, and that's what they'll gravitate towards. So no more leaving all of your stuff outside. Dew collectors, obviously crafting benches, jerky racks. You want to have them somewhere safe. Now, obviously, the hardest material is the mushroom bricks. So having a sort of safe room that you've built, a central room, then outside it covered in maybe the partitions or palisades, that could be a decent idea. Or simply have somewhere to put them all and you can still have them outside, but as soon as the raid is about to approach, you start moving some of the more kind of expensive crafting stations to somewhere safer. 
I'm going to do a fresh brand new guide about the strength of base parts and what is the strongest and weakest. But clearly without even the mushroom build pieces, stems really do offer a lot of protection as well. It's double the amount of grass. And if you really haven't or can't be asked trying to collect all the stems, then you could simply just make layers and layers of grass. Like I said, it's about putting your stuff somewhere safe in the strongest part of your base, the core, and then like normal, having more kind of easier stuff that can break down, but more of it so on the outside. It does help obviously having natural defenses. So anywhere where the pond is and you've got the walls, the flower bed walls, that's already saving you having to build across a huge chunk. So having bases lined up against some of this could be a really good opportunity. And what you really need is to make sure you've got plenty of places that you can get on top of your base and defend as the flying creatures especially obviously are going to be attacking your base from up high and so that's what you need to really worry about being able to get at them if you haven't got a load of arrows or you maybe haven't got enough strong weapons with your bows or arrows of course we have got the new turrets that were added in and the explosive burr the turrets still need a little bit of tuning i feel they're still a bit underpowered or weak but they certainly will help a little bit. Here you can see I've got an ant raid that's meant to be happening and because I haven't got a base close, I don't seem to be paying too much attention to any of my other structures. In fact, I feel like they're meant to be spawning in the new unfinished zone above me, but they can't get down to me easily and so my base is safe even here from pretty much land creatures. That's not always the case, the infected will come and attack you from across the pond on the opposite side, I've had that happen when I've used the waft emitter. But that's what's going to happen, incoming payback, once the bugs have destroyed enough of your kind of benches or base, it will say payback delivered. I filled the waft emitter up again with mosquito parts just to show how much damage they'll do. They go for your crafting benches and your defences, so like the turrets is something they're going to focus on more. But all in all, I didn't lose much. I lost a few wall pieces and a few pieces of floor, but they didn't get inside my central core. So you get the idea. Have palisades around your base for the land creatures and just make sure you've got your important stuff like your resources in chests somewhere really hard to get into. Doesn't mean you have to build massive gigant bases anymore or put palisades or the spike strips absolutely everywhere. You just gotta be a bit smarter about locations. So, the ponds could be potentially a good idea as long as you're ready to take on a lot of air creatures. Obviously, against the pond walls or the flower bed walls, that's always a good spot as well. You can save a bunch of resources building close to here. The picnic table could still be valid as well by having roofs on top of the D&D &D board. Although, do remember, black ants do get up here, so you still can be attacked by certain land creatures like that. And the decking actually is a decent area as well i don't think i've ever seen any bugs up here or tree bases inside the hedge that is another good location you just need lots of space and walkways that you can get outside and kill any of the flying creatures that might come and attack to avoid factions until you're ready maybe with certain things then the picnic table is where the bees are going to get enraged the black ant eel is obviously for the black ants the haze for the infected the flooded zone for the mosquitoes and the red ant hill for red ants termite den for termites and obviously the hedge for the orb weavers if you think you can avoid killing creatures altogether and you won't get a raid like i said spending time in these zones still enrages them but definitely killing them definitely makes it a bit quicker even places like this could be good though put a gateway at the edge of there and you've got a nice little encampment that you don't have to worry about getting attacked too much if you decide to clear out the island in the kind of wetlands then you will have to worry about mosquitoes but nothing else and it really can take a long time, depending on how many days it's been between them. I killed over 130 ants at the ant hill, and it took about 25 minutes for it to finally say they were enraged. Just look how many dead ants there are. I got stage 3 killing ants per mutation. They was even bringing out their eggs. I guess they were trying to abandon the ant hill, or maybe they just wanted more reinforcements to spawn to take me out quicker. Finally, when I was taking a look at some of my stats, the threat detected popped up and I knew that they were going to be attacking me. I only had some bases near the pond area, so I quickly ran over to that side to see if they'd done any damage. And they weren't doing any kind of damage. I couldn't even find them on the map and before long, they actually disappeared. I maybe had a few crafting stations somewhere in the dead grass zone just at the outside hedge of the haze. So they might have gone there, but you can see the idea. As long as your fortifications or your outposts have got some basic principles, you shouldn't worry too much about the actual base defense. 
I love the idea of this. I want them to flesh it out more. I can't wait to see what they can add to the future. And I kind of want it to be quite hard. But clearly devs don't want people feeling too pressurized that they can't get on and play and enjoy their game. And do remember, if you've created a custom world already, you can go ahead and turn off the functions of the base raid completely. They do need to add some way that players that haven't started a custom world, maybe older worlds, can add this option. Because I do believe it's only custom worlds that you can edit even now after the latest update, which kind of sucks. So I really do hope they do find a way that you would be able to adjust an older world in the future if you really want to turn this stuff off. But it's not as big a deal as I think we all made out or thought, especially with the nerfs that they've made and the amount of time it takes between the bugs hitting. They do destroy more of your base now, they will do more damage than they previously did, but it's not as annoying as other games. I really feel like it adds a little bit more flavour to the game, something a bit more random. It's a bit gimmicky right now, hence why we don't necessarily need as much of the turrets and stuff as you think you might need, but in the future maybe that could be something they're aiming towards to increase difficulty or have it there as an option for players. But there we go, that's everything you need to know about faction reactivity and some tips about locations and what to expect. If it's helped you out, let me know. Look out for some more detailed guides for me all about the bug strike back, and I'll see you rat bags later.